Good afternoon. My name is Dr. David Nuttall, and I'd um, like to speak about alternating currents to help uh, students with their uh, physics A level studies. Um, the topics covered will include definition of AC and its graphical treatment, root mean square or RMS values, dealing with square and rectangular waveforms, power in AC circuits, power losses in transmission lines, rectification, and methods of measuring alternating currents. So firstly, the definition of alternating current. Um, if the polarity of an EMF changes with time, it is known as alternating EMF. The current that such an EMF produces uh, repeatedly changes direction and is known as alternating current. So there's a circuit with a simple bulb on the left showing the um, symbol for the AC generator which is a sine wave um, and the current and voltage are measured in, in the normal way as you would in a DC circuit. Um, and on the left, on the right of that, are graphical treatments of current and voltage. In this case, they're both in both in phase, and they show the characteristics of time period. And the maximum value of current is I naught, and the voltage will be V naught. And of course, it goes down minus V naught and minus I naught uh, appropriately. So here's um, a graph of voltage versus time for, for an AC. Um, the equation is E equals E circle sine omega t and the, the time period is defined as the time taken to complete one cycle and the SI unit is a second and the frequency um, which is 1 over t of course of the AC supply is the number of cycles passing a given point each second and the SI unit is seconds to minus 1 or hertz. Um, root mean square values the root mean square is the effective value of an alternating current or voltage corresponding to a steady current or voltage that would give the same heating effect. The rate of working in watts at a time t is I squared R or E squared over R or EI. Uh, and then equations are shown there to incorporate the AC. So it's I naught squared R where I naught is the peak current. Um, sine omega t where omega is 2 pi f. With the angular frequency and then the same with e squared, o, e, e squared 0 over r sine squared omega t or e naught i naught sine squared omega t. Um, in the case of a square wave um, it follows that the i rms is equal to the i naught and e rms is equal to e naught because it, of the heating effect is, is, is the same thing. However, if we have asymmetric rectangular waves, uh, finding the RMS um, for the current is shown in the diagram below. So um, what we do is to split it up into time intervals. Um, so 0 to 1, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. And then we look at the current at each point. And then we square the current at that point. And then uh, what happens is we um, we add them up and of the squares and then divide by the number of seconds, um, and that is shown there. In the case of power in AC circuits, um, since P is equal to I V, and in this case this is for a pure resistor, when current and voltage are both in phase, um, the power curve is always positive, as a product I times V is always positive shown in the graph there, so it's um, like a sine wave but which only goes down to zero. Um, so the mathematical part, during a complete cycle I alternates between plus I naught and minus I naught. The average value of I is zero over the complete cycle, but the power dissipated is always positive of course. The average value of I over the whole cycle can be shown as a half I naught squared R or a half E naught squared over R or a half E naught I naught. Um, and then the values of I RMS can be found from the equation shown below. And it transpires that um, I RMS is 1 over the square root of 2 times the um, peak current, so it's 0 0.707 I naught. Similarly, for the voltage, it's 1 over root 2 times E naught or 0.707 E naught. 
Um, power losses in transmission cables. Transformers may be used to step up AC voltages from power stations before they are distributed to their homes. This has the effect of stepping down the current, thereby minimising the IR squared R losses as heat is surroundings along the lines. A second advantage of high voltage uh, low current transmission means that we can of course use thinner wires and therefore cheaper cables. Disadvantage is the high cost of substantial insulation needed when employing high voltages and possible risks of course. Um, now we deal with rectification. If we simply put a diode in series with the um, AC source to the load um, we just get the negative parts of the AC cycle cut off down to zero so we just get alternating humps shown in the lower diagram. However if you want full wave rectification which is used on many school power sources etc um, we have what we call an AC bridge there and there's four diodes arranged so the current will always flow through in the same direction so we then cut off the negative half which we had in the half wave rectification so that's it looks like that. Um, we can smooth the um, the output by using a capacitor and as you can see if we have the half wave rectification there then um, there's a decay of the capacitor which then makes it drop a little bit but we've got like just like an AC ripple ripple voltage is shown there on the right and it looks like um, a sawtoothed edge as you can see there. Transformers uh, are used to alter voltage, uh, either increasing or decreasing, depending on the what we call turns ratio um, of the number of coils on the primary and secondary. And it follows that um, E secondary over E primary is equal to the number of turns on secondary and the number of turns on primary, so it's a simple ratio. Um, and if we assume 100% uh, efficiency, then the IE product will be constant. Um, so the currents will be inversely proportional to the um, voltages, of course, um, assuming 100% efficiency. In practice, uh, transformers, commercial transformers, have very high efficiency, normally in the range 95 to 99%. There are various methods of measuring alternating current. Uh, we can use a, mo a meter moving iron, a thermocouple meter, a rectified current meter or a cathode ray oscilloscope or CRO. First of all the moving iron meter. The repulsion type consists of two soft iron rods P and Q mounted in the solenoid parallel to the axis. P is fixed and Q is carried by the pointer. Um, current passing either way magnetises P and Q in the same direction so they repel. Since deflection is proportional to the square of the current, the meter can be used to measure either DC or AC and in the latter case we, we get the RMS values since this relationship applies. Um, notice the scale is non-linear being close up for small currents. Um, a second method is to use a thermocouple meter. One junction of a thermocouple is joined to the um, center of the wires XY carrying the current to be measured and is heated by it. The other junction is at room temperature. When the current flows in XY a thermoelectric EMF is generated and produces a direct current that can be measured by the micrometer previously calibrated as shown on the right in the diagram. The hot junction is closed in an evacuated bulb to avoid drafts. Um, this type of uh, meter relies on the heating effect of a current and is therefore measures RMS values directly. It is also used for measuring AC of high frequency up to 7 MHz due to its low capacitance and inductance. Um, another way of measuring AC is use a rectifier meter. So like in the previous diagram we just put a, um, a rectifier in series with the moving coil meter and as shown in the diagram below in B, uh, we get to the um, sawtooth type wave. Um, and then the scale of the rectifier meter is calibrated to read RMS values of the current and PDs with sinusoidal waveforms. The fourth method is 
is the cathode ray oscilloscope shown in the diagram there um, with no PD the um, spot stays in the center uh, if we um, apply a DC um, voltage then the spot will just move up or down according to polarity and if we put that's on the y axis if we put an x axis we put a um, time base that sweeps the spot from side to side so it looks like a continuous line when it goes fast enough um, then uh, we can then apply the, the voltage to the y plates and then see um, the magnitude and of course frequency which you can't do with the other three methods of course. Um, so here's some worked examples to try. First one, a sinusoidal AC may be shown as I equals 18 sine 100 pi T and they ask us for the peak value of the current, the RMS current, the supply frequency and the time period of the supply. So um, you can have a few seconds to look at that and then stop the tape maybe and then you can uh, have a go trying it yourself. Solution to work to example one. Um, I naught is 18 amps. That represents um, I naught in the equation. The root mean square current will of course be 1 over square root of 2 times 18 which works out at 12.7 amps. Um, F is 50 hertz and T is 0.02 seconds. Work to example two. An AC supply gives 30 volts RMS which is fed to a pure resistance of 10 ohms, what is the power dissipated? Again, I'll give you a few seconds to look at that and then the results will come up shortly. Solution to work example two. Um, power is V RMS squared over R, which is 30 squared over 10, which is 900 over 10, which is 90 watts. So the answer is key C, that's the correct response. Worked example 3. The diagram shows AC currents of sinusoidal and square waveforms which are passed in turn through a resistor. The power dissipated in, is the same in each case. Um, given that the peak value of the sinusoidal current is 1 amp, what is the peak value in amps of the square waveform current? And there's a range of options given to you. Again, a few minutes to look at that, stop the tape if you like, and then the answer will follow shortly. Solution to work to example 3. The RMS value is 1 over root 2 amps. The square waveform I squared has a constant value of I0 squared and is therefore average value of I squared is I0 squared, so I RMS is I0. Consequently, the correct response is B. Work example 4. Three circuits were used to rectify an alternating current shown in the diagram. A CRO with fixed settings of time, base and Y gain are connected in turn as shown and produce different traces in each case. Which diagrams show these traces most accurately? Again, a short time to look at this and the results will follow shortly. Solution. Key A is incorrect, as it shows unrectified current, as also is key D, no smoothing capacitor in the CRO. Key C is also incorrect, the CRO2 is only half wave rectification. Key E is incorrect, full wave rectification shown but circuit only half wave. This leaves of course the answer key B as the correct option. Work to example 5, this involves power losses in, in um, cables and so forth. The input power is 3.4 times 10 to 6 watts and transform is used to step down 600 kilovolts to 240 kilovolts. What is the primary current? What is the turns ratio of the transformer and if it is working at 90% efficiency how much power is wasted in the transformer? What would be the current in the secondary winding? Again you can have a look at that, stop the tape and results will follow in a second. Solution to work to example 5. The primary current is equal to power input over input voltage and that works out to 5.67 amps. The turns ratio is NS over NP 
which is ES over EP, which is 240 over 600, or 0 0.4. 10% of the power is wasted, which is 0 0.1 times 3.4 times 10 to 6, which is 0 0.34 megawatts. Hence, the input power is 3.4 minus 0 0.34, which is 3.06 megawatts. The current in the secondary is 3.06 10 to the 6 over 240 times 10 to the cubed, which is 12.8 amps. Answer. Work example 6. An average of 120 kilowatts of electric power is transmitted to a small town from a power plant 10 kilometers away. The transmission lines have a total resistance of 0.4 ohms. What's the power loss if the power is transmitted at 240 volts, in case A or case B, 24,000 volts? Again, you've got a short time to look at this and then get the answer. Solution to work to example 6. In each case, we calculate the currents in the lines, the power loss and the power loss from P to I squared R. In the first case, I is P over V, and that gives 500 amps. Hence, the power loss is 500 squared over 0.4, which is 100 kilowatts. In the second case, uh, the current works out at 5 amps, and the power loss in this case is 10 watts. So there's a big difference there, uh, a square effect, of course, for the current. Um, work to example 7, here we have um, the CRO and they're asking us what is the peak voltage and the peak and the time period for the trace shown below. The Y gain is set at 0.5 volts per centimetre as you can see and the time base is 2 milliseconds per centimetre. So that's needed to solve the problem. The answer will follow shortly. Solution to work to example 7. Diagram shows the trace produced, um, as mentioned, the time base is set at 2 milliseconds per centimetre and at 0.5 volts per centimetre. This gives a peak voltage of 1.25 volts and a time period of 7.6 milliseconds. Well, thank you for watching this and I hope it's uh, proved useful um, for your studies. Um, thank you very much and um, if you want extra information, please visit my website www.alevelphysics.co.uk. Thank you very much.